Hello, beautiful people. This is Elisa Medhus reading from My Life After Death and Memoir from Heaven, a book channeled by J.B. Butler uh, of My Son in the Afterlife. So we'll, we'll make this pretty short. This is the final bit of the chapter entitled My New Perspective. I'm not going to put subtitles because you guys can just get the book and, and read it yourself. <laughs> the shift in my consciousness also switched from my head to my heart. My head isn't running the show anymore. There are no thoughts racing around in my head like, did that shit really happen? Yeah, that really happened. Or, oh my God, is that girl looking at me like she likes me? Or like she thinks I look like an idiot? Sorry about my eyeball. I got beat up by a negative entity in this scattered field. Anyway, it's so world how I don't rely on just the thoughts in my brain anymore. I mean, I don't have a brain now. But I'm just using that word to explain what I guess I'd call head consciousness. Now my entire body communicates in a different way. It's through my heart. It's hard to explain, but my heart can now communicate independently from the voice of my head and has this whole conversation in and of itself. It's called heart consciousness. Heart consciousness is hard to define because it's so nebulous. It's easy to grasp head consciousness because you can hear that inner voice in your head word for word. As a human, it was what I was used to. But this new type of consciousness is more emotional. Now I lead with my heart. I lead with my emotions. I feel first and think second. And we usually think first and then that conscious up emotions. I feel an emotion. Then that triggers a thought, and then that determines the choices I make. As a human, I had it all backwards. I had a thought that triggered an emotion, and then the emotion caused me to act or react in a certain way. And Eric tells us time and time again to not do that, to do it the way he does it now. That shift to heart consciousness helped me heal by letting my heart take the front seat to my head so that my negative thoughts don't get in the way anymore. If I had to give that heart-centered consciousness a sensation, I would say it's like a much-needed sleep after you're physically, emotionally, and mentally exhausted. A deep, healing, relaxing sleep. When it comes right down to it, I think that the biggest shift in my perspective once I became a spirit was the realization that a lot of the pain I suffered when I was alive was the result of not listening to my heart and my emotions and letting my brain run away with itself. As soon as I was able to think with my heart instead of my head, I got it. I even understood the true nature of suffering. I understood that suffering is caused by resisting what you're struggling against, or stamping it down, or ignoring it. Thinking only with your head makes you resist stuff. Resistance comes in many forms. It might be looking away from the pain or denying it. It might be blaming someone else for it or trying to bury it in drugs or sex or whatever. If I had listened to my heart more when I was alive, I'll bet I would have been a lot happier, even though I would have still been sick and I know that things probably would have turned out the, uh, like they did. Maybe I would have reached out more and listened more or just loved more. All I know now is that if you use your heart and embrace it for what it has to offer instead of just using your brain to resist what you struggle with all the damn time, you're going to be a lot better off. Mind, body, and soul. All right, the next is part three, the afterlife. And that's going to be some fun shit, as Eric would say. So be sure you follow me on TikTok. All right, Elisa Medhus at uh, AtlantisScaler.com if you want to look into scalar work or Channeling Eric which is the blog and the YouTube channel etc radio show if you want to uh, you know get into more spiritual stuff including all the wisdom that Eric has taught us thank you bye